Hello, and welcome to um, Professor Collins' Excel workshop. I am Professor Collins. Um, so in this workshop today, uh, these workshops are just a few minutes each. Uh, I would say five to ten minutes. Um, some may be longer, some may be shorter. Um, so in this workshop, this workshop is about um, basic descriptives. And so today in this workshop, we'll be talking about uh, frequency distributions or how to create um, frequency tables with nominal, ordinal, and interval slash ratio data, as well as calculate percentages and proportions. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sort of navigate between these tabs down at the bottom and I'm going to create some new tabs. Um, so this tab here is raw data. And so this is data that has um, been collected from a survey that we conducted. And so what we have here is our raw data. And as you notice, there are um, five, is that five? One, two, I can't count. One, two, three, four, five, six different columns here. Um, the first column is the identification number. Um, the second column is the first variable. Um, so this variable asks the question, tell us about how you found out about the survey. Um, column C, the third variable, is actually the exact same thing as column B. Um, so to keep them sort of aligned and identified, what I'm going to do is just create a, just a small little highlight here um, so, we can, so we know that they're the same thing. Um, the difference is, is these are the raw data and uh, numerical data, and these are the raw data uh, in terms of their response options, right? So if you're taking the survey and you select other, um, other comes through in the survey as other, um, but we can also download the data as numer in a numerical format instead of a um, text format. Um, the same thing is true with the second variable here. So uh, real change is a weekly publication. How often do you buy real change? Uh, so what we have here is the same exact thing, right? Every week is two two weeks per month is four, three weeks per month is a three, so on and so forth, right? And so what we'll do here is we'll do the same thing and just kind of highlight as this is a light blue so we know these are the same two variables um, or these two columns are the same variable. And then finally we have what is your annual household income. And what I've done here is this negative 99 doesn't mean they make negative $99 a year, um, what this is indicating is that there is uh, missing data here, so people have elected not to respond to this information, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of close that a little bit and open this up. So since this is just the ID, we don't really need this. Um, so we'll, real quick, what I'm going to do so we can see each of our variables is I'm going to do uh, what is called... Um, freeze the frame, right? And so what I'm going to do is go to view, um, or freeze panes rather, go to freeze panes, and just freeze the top row. You see a little line up here, and what that does is I can scroll down and still see the variable labels, right? I can see the names of the variables. Um, so what we're going to do in this is we're going to look at conducting or, or building frequency tables um, based really on these three variables. So as you see here, just to highlight, I'm going to um, insert a new row um, and I'll bring this down so you can see. And so this is a uh, nominal. So this will be your nominal data. This is ordinal. So this will be your ordinal variable and interval. All right. So first we're going to take a look at the nominal data. So we're going to start messing with what's called pivot tables. Now what pivot tables do is it allows us to, um, to summarize our data in a way um, that's actually fairly easy to look at. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to insert and we're going to go to pivot table. Now when I open pivot table, a little, uh, a little um, response option will open. And what we want to do is we want to actually select our range. And so we'll click this, it'll minimize this little um, box, and we'll highlight the, the data that we want to use. And so if I do this and I press um, Shift Control and the Down button, it'll highlight all of our data, right? So 558 responses. 
click back on this, um, make sure this says new worksheet. And what this will do is it'll add a new um, worksheet at the bottom here and you'll see what I mean. And then you can click OK. So right now you have this little thing that says pivot table and you have our fields. And so again, we're interested in our first, um, our first thing here. So if we click this, you'll see this in rows. And now you'll see minimized our um, six different response, six or seven different response options. What do we have here? Um, so our six or seven different response options, right? And so um, what we see is, what is this? Our seven response options. Um, again, our, our negative 99 means that there was no response. Whoever, whoever filled that um, particular survey out left it blank. Um, so then what we wanna do is we wanna take this and now also add it to values. And you'll see this little thing pop up here. So now this automatically generates our frequency table, right? What we can see is we have a grand total of 556 surveys um, and uh, 33 said other. One said, I saw the ad on the Real Change website. 36 said, I saw the ad in Real Change. Um, 174 said, I received an email notification from Real Change. 292 said, I got an announcement card. Eight said, they found it on Facebook and 12 left it blank, right? And so this is a real quick, easy way to generate frequency tables um, for nominal, specifically for nominal data, right? And so what I'll do just to highlight this is I will re right click and rename and call this nominal. Um, now we can do the exact same thing with our other variables here. Um, so what I'll do is just to highlight each of these, I'll go back and I'll do the same thing. I'll insert a frequency table, or excuse me, a, a pivot table, and I'll say OK. And what I'll do is I'll change this to ordinal, right? And, um, uh oh, um, let's, let's try that again, actually. Let's, uh, let's undo this. Um, let's just delete that. Delete, go to our raw data, right, pivot table, select our range, and we actually don't want that top one right, because it's uh, it says those variables, so it'll, so anyway, you can see what I'm doing here. So it's the same thing as we did last time. Um, select OK, and now we have our variable names. So I will call this ordinal. Right? And again, what we do is we select on the variable we're interested in. So since this is our ordinal var variable, um, our variable is uh, real change is a weekly publication. How often do you buy real change? I want to click on that. And then when I, I want to hover over it and left click it and drag it down into the values. And that automatically pops up our frequency table here. Right? Um, now let's do the same thing with our interval ratio data. Um, so again, pivot table, um, select our range. We're going to go here, down this way, click OK, and then we'll create a new worksheet. There we go, rename this as, um, I'll just call it IR, interval, and interval ratio, OK. So again, here's our interval ratio variable. We'll click on that. Um, that actually gives us the sum. So we're gonna move this over here and then we will bring down the values. So this is what this is doing is summing our values. Um, what we wanna do is we wanna click on this little arrow and go to value field settings and we wanna count, right? So the count is counting the number of people who have that response. Um, the sum, so each of these arithmetic um, selections give you something different, right? So we want the count because that counts the frequency or the number of people who have that response instead of um, summing those people or averaging them or, or whatever else, right? Um, so that's our frequency table. So now we see there's 197 people who didn't respond, one who said zero, one who said one, one who said 35, so on and so forth, all the way down, right? Um, and so these should be set up in order of um, of most least to most, right? And so as we can see here, you know, people majority around the middle, there's 35 that have about 100,000. 
um, 24 that are around 60,000. So this gives us an idea, a summary of our data, right? 24 people have 50,000, and in total, um, 556 have responded, right? So this gives us sort of a summary of our data, a summary of our information. Um, and that's exactly what a frequency table is. Now let's real quick talk about percentages and proportions. So let's do that with our nominal data. And so using this pivot table or this frequency table, um, we can now create proportions and percentages. And we'll do this using what's called formulas. Now in Excel, a formula helps calculate um, various equations or, or various things, right? And so we always start our formula with the equal sign. And so formulas can be created just like a standard um, a standard equation um, by hand or on uh, on a calculator, right? So that's a nice thing about using Excel. Um, so what we want to do here is we want to, so in order to create a proportion, a, pro a proportion is simply the frequency of those responses divided by the total number or the N is what we call it, right? And so what we're going to do here is we're going to take our, um, our cell and we're going to enter the cell. So our cell is B4, right? So we're in B and we're in uh, row 4, so column B, row 4. So we're going to take B4 and make sure your, your cell is highlighted. And we're going to divide that by cell B11, right? So we'll enter B11 and make sure those two are highlighted and we'll press enter, right? So what we can see is we have a proportion of roughly 0 0.021587272, uh, right? And so in order, so the nice thing about Excel is we can actually copy these, um, these values. Um, so one thing we want to do, just to show you a quick trick, is we can actually take this and we can drag this down. However, as you see, it kind of messes up the formula. And the reason it does that is because cell, Excel is relational. Um, meaning that it will follow, the cells will follow the cell that you're copying it into. And so what we need to do is we need to um, hold the, um, the divisor or the denominator in this case. And the way we do that is that we use um, dollar signs. So we'll put a dollar sign in front of B and a dollar sign in front of 11 and it'll hold it, um, hold it still to, to keep it non-relational. And what you what you can see by relational is as I drag it down, everything else moves down with it. However, by putting those dollar signs there, it does it no longer does that. Right? And now you can see um, what it's doing here. So proportion is is again simply the frequency divided by the total number. We can now change proportions into percentages. And the way we do that is simply um, multiplying the proportion by 100. That's that's basically what a percentage is. So we'll take this equals, and we can do times. So in Excel, times is an asterisk, and we can do 100. Press Enter. Do that same thing. And what we can do is we can highlight where you get the plus sign. And if you double click, it'll automatically drop it down. There you go. So as we can see, 2%, uh, roughly 2% of the people didn't respond. 1.43% um, said they found it on Facebook. 52% said they got an announcement from an announcement card, so on and so forth, right? So this is a nice way to describe our various response options um, when we're using something like Excel uh, for our data, all right? So um, that is going through, let's go back here. So through this workshop, you should learn frequency distributions um, using pivot tables for nominal, ordinal, and interval ratio data. It's basically the same thing. And then calculating percentages and proportions. All right, so that is the Excel workshop. Thanks for listening.